So, uh, Mopika, how would you say that in South African? If I read this in South Africa, I would say Mopeka. So, tell me more about your peka. Welcome to another Milne Epic. In South Africa, we are forever running out of gas. When we braai, when we shower, when we go camping, it's a constant and massive issue. What we want to do today is the dream is, is there a way for me to monitor the amount of gas left I have in my gas cylinders and when the gas gets low, notify me as well as someone else who can drop gas off at my house. What do you have for us? Okay, so there are a couple of options. First one you've probably seen before is the inline pressure monitor. The way the pressure monitors work is it usually connects with your regulator and it, uh, using the pressure it actually relates directly to how much gas you've got in your tank. So you'd need to have an idea as to what is a full tank pressure and what is a close to empty tanks pressure uh, or you might get caught off guard. You'd have to be in front of it to see what the gauge is telling you. So getting that to remotely tell you something is going to be a bit tricky. So what's the difference between that and me walking up to it and shaking the bottle or lifting it up? Well, you don't have to shake it and lift it up because there's a, a gauge. Yes. What but if I don't trust the gauge though? Well, uh, the problem is if you're not 100% sure about the accuracy, you're going to be tempted to, to lift it up anyway. Every movie in all time, what happens when you see a gauge? Must tap it. Must definitely tap it. <laughs> well, that's an option. 320 bucks uh, should get you going. It'll give you something to look at. What else? Uh, temperature. Temperature monitor is quite a clever, simple way of measuring uh, gas. There's a, a differential between where the gas level is and the air level above that. The gas should be colder than the air above it. So there should be a distinct difference and therefore a, a line. It's a good idea and theoretically it should be very accurate and for 40 bucks on take a lot It's a pretty good option So the first review I see here by Sean on the 13th of December and today is the 21st of December says doesn't work Then answer says works well Then Sempiwe says quality product Then Daniela says tested it several times does not work at all Pity because the concept is great. Then we have a no name. My cylinder is full. This thing is still not showing any changes. So out of the average rating, you're getting a 2.6 out of 5. And there was one that I read earlier where someone said they've tested it on a full bottle. It hasn't changed. They don't even know. So is it worth spending 40 bucks or even your time on this? Uh, judging by the reviews, Perhaps it's something that should be free. <laughs> yes, it probably does come free with bottles elsewhere in the world. It's a bit disappointing. You know, sometimes a, a great simple option that you hope to be the solution isn't always the answer. It still doesn't tell me remotely and it still doesn't uh, notify people who can't change my gas. For sure. Uh, how do the professionals do it? How do the gas dealers do it? Well, they do provide uh, digital connections so that you are able to send that information out and connect to it uh, where remotely if necessary. But if you're not making money out of that uh, gas, you're probably not going to like the price point and it's probably going to be too expensive for a standard home or even a normal business for that matter. Okay, so, we, so we cannot, we've identified that it is possible but you can't get off the shelf? Was there something else that we've missed? There's one last one called Mopika. So, uh, Mopika, how would you say that in South African? If I read this in South Africa, I would say Mopeka. So, tell me more about your peka. But I watched the video on Mopika.com and I heard the gentleman call it Mopika. So, we'll call it Mopika. Carry on, about your peka, carry on. So, there's a, a, they call it a propane sensor and the way it works is with uh, ultrasonics. A small device 
connects magnetically to the bottom of your gas cylinder and it uses ultrasonic technology to test the level of the gas inside and the, with uh, Bluetooth send that information to a wireless bridge which then connects you to the internet which then can talk to your cell phone and tell you what's going on. Again, uh, a, 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 in theory, a, a good option. Okay, but what are we talking in money? Uh, once you've imported it, uh, with, without shipping rather, probably 1,500 Rand. For the bridge? I think that would include the bridge. Yeah, altogether 1,500 Rand before shipping. Alright. Uh, there's one last thing that the internet seems to know all about, and it's called a tank utility. It comes highly recommended, but if you do stumble upon it, the way it works is it connects to a float level inside the gas bottle and then takes that mechanical information and it turns it digital so you're able to access it remotely. First indicator that you showed us, is that the same thing? No, not at all. It's a built-in float level sensor inside a gas bottle. Oh, so we don't get fancy bottles, we I've get bullshit seen. crappy bottles. Yes, which I've never seen in South Africa. So if you have a gas bottle with a built-in float level indicator, this might be an option for you. But for the rest of us, a three, hundred, a three and a half thousand rand option before you've spent money on shipping is probably not the best option and i promise you now if someone had to come to my house and see a floating gauge on the gas bottle i'd never get that bottle back that'll go to the owner of whoever the gas seller people are <laughs> i think you're probably right we've got a covid friendly kenny over here as you can see he's got the vid so uh, yeah i mean obviously there's the, the diy option um as far as your, your gas monitoring goes as well. It's probably not one of the, the type that you can take to remote areas and camping, but it's definitely a cost-effective uh, solution for around the house. So uh, as far as building it, just use three um, main electronics co uh, components. With shipping, you'll probably have it at your house for about 550 Rand. And, and essentially the way that it works is as a scale. So what you would do is you would create a platform that your gas bottle sits on and the scale will already know what your gas bottle's weight is. And as, as you use your, your gas uh, throughout time, uh, you can set different tolerances. So if there's 20 or 10% left on it, you can have it uh, send you a notification. And obviously the notification will come through Home Assistant, as you, you would be integrating that using TAS motor onto a Home Assistant dashboard. And obviously you can keep real live information as to what the status is of your bottle. So you're saying that we can get the fancy industrial type stuff working for 550 bucks? Yes. A rustic version but it will work nonetheless let's check that out hey guys so i'm going to uh, run you through the gas scale assembly very briefly just so you can see what i did and then just take you through what you need to do as far as tasmodo goes and then the calibration so uh, just excuse it. it is a little bit rustic Essentially, you're just going to need a platform to obviously put your uh, gas bottle on. In my case, I just had a piece of pine in the garage. I cut it uh, to 35 by 35 centimeters. As you can see, it's about, I would say, between 16 and 18 mil thick, which should be more than enough for a uh, 20 kg gas bottle, which I'm going to be using in my case. Then on the back, as I said, just excuse the rusticness. So uh, what you're looking at is we've got load cells in each corner. Each is uh, rated at 50 kgs. And then these are attached to a amplifier. This is a HX711 uh, amplifier. And then that gets connected to a just a remote MCU. So uh, what we're going to be needing from our node MCU is just the D1 and D2 pins and then ground and our VCC. Yeah, so, so once that's all connected, then we'll just get into the um, test motor flashing and then finally doing the calibration. So all the parts, we'll supply some links uh, in the blog just for you to uh, get hold of them online if you are that way inclined. But anyway, let's jump into the uh, good stuff in the sense of flashing the Node MCU with uh, test motor and then doing the calibration. Okay, at this stage we have completed the build. 
the actual scale so we need to get the node MCU flashed with Tasmodo um, firmware right so um, just for more information regarding the tools that you can need to do this if you can just have a look at the blog um, it will give you a link to obviously the tool itself Tasmatizer and then the bin file that you're going to be needing to flash your node MCU with so in this case I have already connected the node MCU uh, to my computer and uh, it's popped up as uh, COM10 we're going to leave that as default uh, as far as your backup goes um, and then underneath bin file we're going to go and look for the uh, bin file that we have downloaded so mine is over here and download sensor Okay, so I'm going to set it to uh, reset once it's flashed it and also uh, erase the device because uh, this device has been in use for something else before. So we are going to select Tasma Tires and we will wait for that to finish. So the flash went off without a hitch, so we're going to go OK to that. Uh, next, we want to just send uh, config to the node MCU uh, in the sense of getting it onto our Wi Fi. So we're going to select this. So, uh, this will just obviously apply to uh, whatever your Wi Fi is. And then um, I also like just to specify my uh, MQTT server at the beginning uh, as we will be integrating this with uh, Home Assistant afterwards. So uh, uh, be sure to put your MQTT details in at this stage. Um, also, I'm going to give it a description. So we'll just say gas underscore uh, scale. And then I will also be putting in my username and password for the MQTT server. Right, and then we can save that. And uh, let Tasmodo uh, complete that. And uh, yeah, next step we will be moving into the uh, web interface where we can uh, finish the configuration. Okay, great. So now that we have flashed the uh, Node MCU, um, this is essentially what you should be seeing. So what we're going to be doing is going to the configuration, then configure module. And then under the configuration of the module, we're going to select generic, which is right at the bottom of the list. But just give that a moment uh, before it gets back to your uh, main configuration screen. So we're going to click on that again. Configure module. And in this case, um, there's two pins that we need to configure for the node MCU, which is your D1 and uh, your D2. Again we're going to save that and then give it a chance just to reboot and uh, as you can see um, at the top it's reading the HX711 uh, at the moment obviously the, um, the scale itself is not accurate so we will now move into the calibration of the actual scale. So uh, before we start let's head over to the kitchen got an old water bottle uh, filled it with uh, some water and then just used the kitchen scale to confirm that it was one kilogram uh, before I went over to the scale to start the calibration. So once you've got that, uh, what we're going to do is um, head over to the console and the first command that we're going to be running is the following and um, don't, don't worry if I'm going a little bit too fast. This is all in our blog as well. So you can just copy the value straight from there. But in my case, I've got the, um, I've got a, a thousand grams, as I said. So the command is sensor 34 
space 2 and then space 1000 so the 1000 uh, represents a thousand grams so what I'm going to be doing just to uh, so that you guys know um, is I'm going to be uh, pressing enter and as you can say it says remove weight now I don't have it on yet but I'm going to put it on now when it says uh, that you need to load the uh, reference weight and then not long after it says that it's calibrated now the step is kind of um, important um, in the sense of I have gone through the blog quite a bit and in the past I did struggle to get the calibration right because uh, others suggest that the item has to be on the scale before you do the calibration but I've just found it to be um, a lot more uh, stable doing it this way so don't put anything on the um, on the scale uh, before you do the calibration just wait for the section where it says that you, you need to uh, load the reference weight and you will find that it works thereafter then once you've done that head back to the main menu and just confirm so at the moment you can see that there's one kilogram at, uh, on your scale and just to confirm I've gone and filled another water bottle also a kilogram and uh, I've placed that on and a few seconds later we should see that um, it is now showing two, t uh, two kilograms so that's all great um, there is a few more tweaks that we can do however the one let's get the scale to be a little bit more responsive so there is a command called teleperiod uh, which we can set it to check every 20 seconds so that will be our first command and again just check out the blog and you'll find reference to these okay so as you can see that's now completed and then finally we want the scale to be a little bit more accurate than just saying one or two uh, kilograms so let's uh, get it to read showing some of the grams as well and we can achieve that by say, setting the weight uh, resolution to three okay and that should pretty much wrap it up so uh, if we go back to the main menu as you can see um, our two bottles that's still sitting on the scale is reading um, as 2.049 kilogram and that's it that should uh, be all that we need to do to get uh, it working from the Tasmoda side so as I finished that section of the, um, the recording uh, with the two two liter bottles or one liter bottles, um, I would ask will it definitely work with a gas bottle? So I went to go and fetch the 15 kilogram uh, gas bottle out of the kitchen and uh, let's put it to the test. So I've got a 15 kg uh, bottle. Let's put it on. As you can see it is on and you can see um, it is quite a new bottle i've used about a kg of gas so far so if you'd like to find out more click on the links and see what else there's around yes and uh, please check out our blog uh, there's some links that might be hopefully useful on the build of the diy version thank you so much for watching if you want to buy what kenny built you can use the discount code below and check it out on our site if you're watching this before christmas because we don't know when we're releasing this one. Happy Christmas. If you're watching it after Christmas and before New Year, Happy New Year. If you're watching it after both, hope you had a great holiday. See you soon. Like, oh, I think that, that would cover everything. All right, good. All right, we can stop this recording and then um, we'll start the next one. Okay, I'm going to stop this one and phone you back.